Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We are here in studio again talking sports with Val. How are you today, Val? Good. It's been a, been a crazy week. It's been crazy weather week. Yeah. It's been a thunderstorm one minute and 80 degrees and sunny the next, and sometimes within like 15 minutes of each other, but... Kind of depends on where you're at, too. We had yeah. some games that went on last night. We had some things that were canceled and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff going on with the weather here. It's kind of been one of those years, uh, probably the, the worst I can remember in several years as far as cancellations and things getting moved and bumped around. So Right, right, and teams have been scrambling for games. And uh, I was talking with Jared Little, Johnny's the baseball coach at Tippecanoe Valley. He said kind of weird, you know, we're an independent now, so when other schools have to make up a conference game, we're kind of the odd team out, and they've yeah. been struggling just to get games in. Yeah, a lot of cancellations of games. You know, Rochester had to cancel yeah. a pair of games that were supposed to happen last night in order to move those Lewis Cass games in and get the conference games in on both softball side and baseball side. And Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I could see where Valley would kind of lose out on that. They'll have, obviously conference coming up next year so they'll be back into that but right i think it's affected coach barger and the softball program as well mm -hmm. well let's let's get down into it here we've got uh some information some college signings happening yeah i know we like to talk about college signings during our intro uh we want to talk about one of our kind of, one of our own here enrique navarro he signed with indiana tech for bowling yeah uh yesterday and boy did i learn a lot about college bowling that i had no idea about um, he is one of 22 recruits that they'll be bringing in to Indiana Tech. There will be 45 overall players in camp. Um, they start practicing usually right around Labor Day in early September. And they they have two weeks of tryouts, and they go from 45 down to 15 for their varsity. Wow. So you've really got to play well just to make their varsity. Yeah. And he's bringing and the, the new coach uh, DeYoung, who we met, he's bringing in 22 recruits. So it's, an, it's interesting. I talked with Enrique. He wants to major in computer science. So he, he really liked the Indiana Tech's program in that. Yeah. Well, that's the biggest thing. You know, we we talk about sports a lot, but you know, when you go to a college, you you want it to be your fit. Sports may change. You know, mm -hmm. things may change. It's obviously a lot different game when you get up there, like you said, with 22 recruits coming in. That's that's a completely different game than you're used to. So. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you know, even if that's not a, a good fit bowling-wise, it's a good fit academically for, for him. Right. And here's here's a trivia question. How many bowling balls does Enrique own? Oh, my gosh. Fifteen. Twelve. Yeah. 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 So I, he, that was just a guess. He goes, it can, he goes, I can use a different ball based on the oil pattern of the lanes, sometimes even, like, the temperature in the, in the bowling alley. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so does he – Travel with fifteen bowling balls. Twelve, much. twelve, I think. Yeah, yeah, quite a few. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he wow. all twelve, all twelve, but yeah. <laughs> Obviously, some are better for spares than others, and yeah. Yeah. Enrique also told me he converted a seven ten split once. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Yeah, that's yeah. the one with two in the back corners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, kind of one of those. Oh, what the hell? I'll just throw it hard down there, and he kind of caromed off the. Got lucky. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's no skill to making that shot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some some really big news uh, about a former area coach that uh, had moved on, and a, a, well, another former area principal that had moved on to to coach in an area school that wasn't too far away. But uh, Aaron Butcher moving back to Ancilla, yeah, to take the head men's basketball coaching job, and he's got an assistant coming with him this time that we're pretty familiar with. Right, and Joel Grindle, of course, Aaron Butcher, the former athletic director at Tippecanoe Valley, and mm -hmm. of course the former boys basketball coach at Hobart. And one of his assistants is going to be Joel Grindle, who had been the boys basketball coach at Plymouth. Right. And he stepped down after three years there to be an assistant. Of course, Joel Grindle... Where he was the head coach at Plymouth, he was an assistant principal at Valley. That's kind of where he and Aaron Butcher m knew each other, and I'm mm -hmm. sure they had had many conversations about basketball. And now they're going to be working together at Ancilla. It'll be, of course, as for Aaron Butcher, he had been the head coach before at Ancilla uh, from 2012 through 2018. Yeah, and he did a really good job there too. And he did a really he good did job, a really good there, job yeah. there before moving out to Enid, Oklahoma. But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, that'll be an interesting combination. Two very good basketball minds there at Ancilla. Yeah. So, uh, see yeah. how that goes. Of course, Joel Grindle was the boys' basketball coach at Argus once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, anything else here before we get into the meat of the softball and baseball talk? Yeah, I think that's I think that's it for now. I'm sure we're going to have a lot more coming up in the next uh, next couple of weeks, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, those are the main things going on right now. Yeah. Well, let's start off with the uh, Rochester Lady Zebras because, uh, boy, they had an impressive run to end the season in the conference. And uh, unfortunately, couldn't get any help there with that uh, Southwood team that only had that one loss. But still, I think a very, very promising uh, Rochester Zebras team. And last night, they, they pick up a win against uh, Lewis Cass on the road at Lewis Cass now. Mm-hmm. Tell me what you think of that. I mean, you know, neither team really showed their hand, but you get a thirteen to four win. Actually, it was fourteen to three. Fourteen to three and five innings. Fourteen to three win. Yeah, yeah I, had the, I had the four and the three mixed up, but um, that's impressive. No yeah. matter no matter how you're playing that game, that's impressive. To be yeah, to to win a, to beat the defending sectional champions on their field. Uh, now, Emma Fitzhugh did not pitch for Lewis mm-hmm. Cass, and Bria Rensberger did not pitch for Rochester. So I don't know if you can take too much from that, but I guess what you can take from it is Amia Hadishel pitched probably her best game in a while. Mm-hmm. You know, she had pitched against Culver Academy last Saturday and really struggled to throw strikes, so for her to pitch a good game uh, against a pretty good lineup, hold them to three runs, I mean, you can say, well, they're not showing their cards, but they're also not not trying to hit the ball. Mm-hmm. Right? It's a double negative. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, <laughs> they're, they're not, not trying to hit the ball, and I think they also have been playing better they also improved their defense. Um, they had had six errors in that win over Whitco the other day, and they played much better defense against Lewis Cass. So, again, I get it. They're going to play Lewis Cass in the sectional again on Monday. Nobody wanted to show off too much, but I think the fact that they they hit Lewis Cass is that Toops, uh, Alicia Toops was their number two pitcher, and they knocked her out of the game. So I think that's a good sign that it's going to have to be Emma Fitzhugh. She's going to have to pitch a great game on Monday because I don't think – Lewis Cass can go to their uh, bullpen, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Where maybe Rochester could if something were to happen to Bria Rensberger. But again, Rochester's won eight in a row. How about Gabby Medina? She had four RBIs last night. And she's she's her hitting has really been coming on. And, uh, you know, they had that, you know, they're finding different ways to win games. They had that game against Whitco on Monday. They're down two to nothing. They're facing a really good pitcher in Cassidy Skinner. And they find a way to win three to two. So. Um. Yeah, a, a really a good sign that they're becoming resourceful and finding ways to win these close games. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously you're gonna miss Keaton Doran, but a lot of uh, a lot of these girls coming back. Obviously, a big freshman class this year that's done really well. So, uh, Coach Coleman's got to feel really good finishing the conference seven and two, and yeah, uh, you know, on an eight game winning streak going into the uh, host sectional that you know the sectional that they're hosting so right by the way they had senior day on saturday it was keaton doran day because she's the only senior and she had an, and uh she had to bat i mean she when she has played she's only been flexed mm-hmm. she got to bat against cga and she had an rbi in a game they won eight to six so that was a really nice moment and um yeah uh aubrey aubrey miller we had to give we had to give a shout out to aubrey she has just been red hot i think she had two four hit games last week I mean, she's been using, you know, she's been back in that number two spot on the batting order, and you can tell how confident she is there. And she's cut down on the strikeouts as well. And putting Aubrey Wilson lead off, and then Aubrey Miller too, well, that's that's been hard to stop. I mean, uh, because Aubrey Wilson's on base constantly, and if she's on base constantly, then you got to worry about the bunt with Aubrey Miller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I mean, obviously, if you look at that sectional, you got to think, okay, Pioneer, and then you got Lewis Cass coming back as the uh, the sectional champions. But you know, who's to say Rochester can't get hot and uh, maybe win this thing in their on their home field? Right. And the team I'm looking at, I mean, I, you know, again, the buys, the buys, the buys, the buys. We talk mm. about the buys, and I think Wabash and North Judson are both dangerous. Yeah. Uh, North Judson has that uh, Molly Matson, I believe is her name. Mm-hmm. She's already broken the North Judson career home run record. I think she said 12 mm-hmm. in her career. I know she had one against Culver the other day. I think they're going to be a dangerous team, even though they're kind of young. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Wabash has been coming out of late as well. So, yeah, yeah uh, again, it's it's a whole, again, I get, I get it. Everybody starts 0-0. Zero and zero, But, again, Rochester does have some momentum. And with Bria Rensberger, they might have the hottest pitcher going on right now. Yeah. 
So we're going to have coverage of all five of those games for you on RTC TV4 on the web on the IHSA Champions Network as well. So tune into those. Uh, Val and Chris and Caden Caleb will have coverage for you from uh, Fansler Field on Monday, Tuesday as I'll be out west. So I'll be back then for the championship there on Thursday. Uh, Rochester Zebras get a, a good win on the road at Lewis Cass to uh, end their season. They end up six and three in the conference. Yeah, fifteen and eight overall, six and three in the conference, and they finished in sole possession of third in the conference uh, by beating Lewis Cass seven to one on Wednesday. That's a Lewis Cass team that was struggled when it finished one and eight in the conference. But boy, uh, the uh, Coach Good is now feeling confident, kind of divvying up the mound time, not only in the non-conference games, but in the conference games. Last night, Brant Beck started a conference game and did great. He allowed only one run over five innings, and he had seven strikeouts in that game. And you know, the thing about Brant, he's coming right at you. I mean, mm-hmm. He's not going to fool around, and he's throwing strikes. And, boy, do coaches appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And um, he had that crazy win against Whitco on Monday they were they're down five to four with two outs in the seventh inning and Brady they intentionally walk Gavin Young to get to Brady Beck and Brady gets a three-run double to win the game seven to five Mm -hmm. that was one of the more dramatic wins of the year of course they had that it's the second time they won a game this year they were down two outs in the seventh inning they had a game against Caston earlier in the year and then Carson Pollock comes in and pitches two great innings to close that one out again coach uh, good has been kind of uh he calls it piggyback piggybacking innings where he had reinerts go the first three innings uh then he had colton fervita pitch the fourth and the fifth and then he had paula close out and pitch the sixth and the seventh okay so he he's kind of tinkering with things he he's not he said he wasn't against maybe doing that even in the sectional game yeah so they got a few games coming up here before they do uh, head over to Chris Root Field there on uh, Wednesday. Right, they go to Twin Lakes for their Twin Lakes tournament. That Twin Lakes tournament that it's kind of the traditional regular season uh, ender, and they'll play both Twin Lakes and Northwestern, two really good teams on mm-hmm. Saturday. And then they have a home game with Concord on Monday that they added to the schedule. It'll be a five thirty start. So mm-hmm. uh, that would be one game I like to go to. Of course, we'll be over at uh, Fansler for the softball sectional, but yeah, that'll be a good one. Uh, I think Concord, one of the better teams in the NLC this year. Yeah, so uh, they will start uh, conference or uh, sectional play at uh, uh, Chris Root Field there on Wednesday. We'll have both games for you on right. Wednesday with Pioneer playing Bremen and with uh, Rochester playing Manchester, and then play the rest right. of that sectional by year as far as coverage goes, depending on how Pioneer and, and yeah. Rochester do. And there's been a slight change in the schedule. I didn't hear why they changed this, but the Rochester-Manchester game will be the first game on Wednesday, and the Pioneer-Bremen game will be the second game. Really? This is a change to the schedule. I don't know why. There must have been something going on at one of these schools. that hmm. Somebody had a commencement or some sort of ceremony hmm. and had to flip-flop. So, okay. Yeah. Oh, good to find that out so I can make sure that uh, we have all that straight. So yeah. Rochester and uh, Manchester first. First Pioneer so Bremen, five o'clock. second. Yeah. Okay. That will be uh, on RTC4 and, and on uh, HSA Champions Network as well Yes, on uh, Wednesday. Yeah. And then, but, yeah. What a year Brady Beck's had. 300 batting average and 15 RBIs. Yeah. I think Rochester has six, six different players with 15 or more RBIs. Yeah, not too bad since he hasn't played since he was like twelve. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's pretty darn good. He goes uh, and, and I interviewed him after the game, and he goes, well, "I can't hit the ball as far as fur, but I can hit it more often." Yeah, and yeah, I mean, and again, you put a kid in that situation, but again, I I was thinking Brady. I mean, he's been under the lights at a, in the state wrestling tournament. Mm-hmm. So bases loaded, two outs in the seventh inning of a baseball game. He's he's not going to be overwhelmed by it, right? And you could tell there was the Whitco pitcher. He he was the one who was maybe overwhelmed by it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so a very good ending to the season. But they got three more games to go. Yeah, against good teams, against higher class teams. Uh, girls tennis uh, sectionals took place. Uh, actually started on Wednesday, but the uh, Rochester Zebras uh, played last night. They had the first round bye, so they uh, they got the winner of. Uh, 
the academy, and I don't even know who the academy had in the first round. They beat, they beat Plymouth, Plymouth five to nothing on yeah. Wednesday, and I think it's fair to. I think most people looked at that as that was maybe kind of the real sectional final. I mean, Plymouth yeah. is a very good team. Also, they had won I think their sectional last year, and Plymouth was added to this sectional this year. So essentially, you had two defending sectional champions in the same sectional, and Culver Academy did beat Plymouth, but. Uh, Plymouth did take a uh, take a set at uh, three singles. I think they took a, might have taken a set at one doubles as well. So they did they did make Culver Academy work for it. Uh, this match against Rochester was a lot more lopsided. Culver Academy won five to nothing, and uh, the final score was six zero six zero in four of the five matches. Yeah. Uh, the one girl who won two games was Riley Clevenger, who really and we we saw her her match. She lost six zero six two. And she really fought. I mean, every, there were a lot of long points, a lot of long rallies in that match, and her match went over an hour. I think that that speaks, that says something. At least again, I I know that doesn't give too much consolation to Riley. I know she's mm-hmm. too much of a competitor, but um, again, the, the Culver Academy players are just their number one singles player was a, a girl named Mira Desai, and she's from Winter Park, Florida. Uh, that's right outside Orlando, so she's probably played. 10 is 12 months a year, mm-hmm. and she probably has played on that USTA circuit where she plays during the off seasons down there. And she, I mean, her serve was just flat out handcuffing Ella McCarter. And I, you know, I mean, uh, again, Ella had to work for just about everything she got. So mm-hmm. tough match. And then, you know, Audrey Bowling, I, I, I was so impre- proud and impressed at how much Audrey improved from one doubles at the start of the year to being a really tough two singles player uh, by the end of the year. But she was playing a player from China named Winnie Ma. And Winnie would, you know, she would hit, go top spin, top spin, top spin, and then kind of almost lull you to sleep, and then bang, she'd hit the, she could just paint the corner, you know, like like clockwork, and it's mm. just that's not easy to do. Yeah, and she could do it very very well. Yeah, and wanted to give a shout out to that one doubles team, Taylor Howard and Chloe Nichols, two seniors, closing out their careers last night. Yep. So the uh, boys golf season winding down as well but they've uh, still got a few few things going on. Yeah, they defeated Laville on Tuesday over at Swan Lake. Rochester had a 165. Laville only has three players so they did an incomplete team. But how about the medalist? Ashton Musselman. Yeah. First I think first time he's been medalist with a 40. Mhm. And uh Rochester had used six players. Everybody shot between 40 and 45. Uh I think J.R. McLaughlin had a 41, and then uh, Noah Riffle and Davis Reney and Isaac Heishmal had a 42. Mm-hmm. Robert Bozzo had a 45. So this team's got a pretty good uh, consistency with it. I know Noah is a little, in a, again, for Noah, a lot of kids would kill for a 42. For Noah, he's in a little bit of a slump of trying to get some things figured out. But I think, uh, again, for if Ashton Musselman's shooting a 40, boy, they're going to be in great shape moving forward. Mm-hmm. Then they had a. They were supposed to play a four-way match, and I wrote about this. I didn't even know what was going on until afterwards. But uh, they, they were supposed to play a four-way match against Valley, Whitco, and Manchester at Round Barn on mm-hmm. Thursday. It was rained out. They played, got in two holes, and then it started pouring. But what they were going to do is they were going to do a Ryder Cup style event. Mm-hmm. So the Rochester and Valley players were going to team up together. Mm-hmm. The Whitco and Manchester players were teaming up together. And I guess they were playing either best ball or alternate shot, hmm. and playing match play. Yeah. And they got in. They got in a couple of holes, and it started to rain. Unfortunately, yeah. that would have been interesting. So, the Rochester and Valley players were teaming up together. Right. And part of it was, you know, for for sportsmanship reasons. You know, and hey, this is your rival, but now you're now you're teaming up with them. And, yeah. Well, the other thing too is is Rochester and Valley. Both obviously share the same home course, and then Whitco and, and Manchester share the same home course as well. So right at Sycamore, yeah. So that, that made a lot of sense. There, it would have been a, a fun event if the weather had cooperated with them. Obviously, yeah. so they're going to do that again next year at Sycamore. Yep. All right, let's take a little break here, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't want to rush through the track stuff. The sectionals for boys and girls took place this week, so we'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk boys and girls track sectionals here in just a moment. Stop on by to In Your Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that In Your will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out In Your Rental selection to get you going. 
Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574-223-4920 to see how Inyart's friendly staff can help you. Pacesetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Pacesetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. All right, welcome back here, talking sports with Val. So, boys and girls, track section was a little bit wet, but they were able to get those both in. The girls ran on Tuesday night. The boys running then last night. Mm -hmm. So, tell us a little bit about some of our uh, results for our Rochester kids. Yeah, well, I got to go to Bremen. Basically, uh, spent most of the night there at Bremen on Tuesday night for the girls' track um, section. It, the weather was kind of overcast and humid, but it was okay. Mm -hmm. And um, Rochester wound up finishing with 38 points and finished in eighth place. Culver Academy wound up winning the sectional again. But Rochester had four regional qualifiers. Um, Kyra Doran was third in the 100 hurdles. And what an impressive freshman she is. And to beat, that was a tough field and a pretty tough race. And it was close at the end with her and Betty Shepard for third place. We'll talk about Betty later um, because she did a lot of good things as well when we talk about Valley. But Kyra got third place. And, you know, I talked with Kyra afterwards, and I never, I never interviewed her before. And I said, how long have you been doing track? She goes, well, since seventh grade. And I said, what do you like about track? She goes, I like to win. <laughs> And yeah. she is a fierce competitor. Like a like she she gets angry when she doesn't win. And I I love her attitude about it all. And yeah, she did well. Sixteen point eight eight. Under anything under seventeen, you're really you're really moving. And I think to, for her to to get on that regional stage is going to be great for her. So third place for her. Audrey Wagner was second in the three hundred hurdles. What a fantastic story. She was the number six seed going in, and she finished second. And behind Betty Shepard, and again we'll be talking about Betty later. But again, <laughs> for Audrey to go under fifty, mm -hmm. which I again that that was such an impressive accomplishment. I think she had gone because even Audrey said, "Well, if I get high, like a high fifty somewhere in there, I'd I'd be pretty satisfied to get forty nine point six. That's just tremendous and beat out a really tough field to get second place. I know Alicia Walkman and John Nile were were just thrilled for her. I think everybody was thrilled for for Audrey because of the sacrifices that she made. She never run the three hundred hurdles before, mm -hmm. and uh, this year she'd already been you know mostly two hundred or four hundred, mm -hmm. but had never hurdled before, hmm. and kind of did it on like last year after sectionals, like late in the spring, like late May. Hey, why don't you try a why don't you try a hurdles race just to see how mm -hmm. it goes? And they, everybody was really impressed, and and for Audrey, she was like, well, I've done the four hundred before, so. Three hundred hurdles that's, isn't that bad. I'm, I'm kind of conditioned for it because I know we've talked about how tough a race it is. It is. Yeah. But Audrey was just kind of like, you know, it wasn't that bad. Hmm. And she just got better and better at it. And, uh, you, know, we, you know, we saw Audrey on the soccer field, you, you know, during the fall. I mean, you can tell she's a really good athlete. But it all all the work kind of paid off here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then um, Ashlyn Wayant was third in the shot put. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to her, 31, 6 and 3 quarters. Not in that Gwen 
Howard category. Went through only 45, six and a half. <laughs> but again, for Ashland to do it, and only a sophomore, and really making, you know, really a really strong thrower, and she was fourth in the discus, almost made it in the discus as well. And last but not least, Allison Callaway got a callback in the 3200. Mm -hmm. 1301.68 for Allison. That was a really tough distance sectional. Um, Sophie Ray from Plymouth, who's, I believe, going to IU. Uh, she won the 800, the 1600, the 3200, and she was ridiculous. Um, but And then Celeste Graham from Culver Academy is in that as well. Uh, so that's a really tough distance sectional. For Allison to make it, I mean, she put a lot of work in, and she's gotten a lot better. And, you know, she's one of the team leaders as a sophomore. Yeah. So moving on to regional, Allison. Boys wise, they finished in sixth place with 47 and a half points. And the regional qualifiers included Harrison Dunwoody, who was third in the 100 hurdles, 16.32. Fourth place from Plymouth was 16.33. He made it on a lean at the tape. Mm. So Harrison's career advances to regional for one more week. Grant Bailey was third in the 1600 meters. This was a very impressive run, 440.39. Obviously, when you get to this stage of the season, you want to get under 440, or 440 mm -hmm. right around there is going to be what it takes if you want to advance, and Grant advances. Yeah. So we'll see how he does next week with even better competition. Mm -hmm. um, Grant was also fifth in the 800, ran a, 20, ran a 207, mm -hmm. and just that was a tough race. Um, but Grant ran well there, too. Mason Heisey advances in the discus, second place with a throw of 135 and 8 inches. Mason's thrown at 145 this year, but I talked with Mason. You know, he was a little disappointed because uh, he has thrown 145 in the past. But, boy, again, I think we've talked about him. He's just he's just starting to, you know, he's filling out physically. He's getting stronger. He's working at, you know, his technique is getting better. He's just ideally suited for the discus. He got beat by Isaac Ireland from North Miami again. But really, gonna ha really had a nice night, and uh, I asked Mason. I talked talked to Mason. I said he talked about his goals. What did they say? People don't laugh at your goals. You're not. You're not. You shouldn't. You're. What's the line? If people don't laugh at your goals, you're not being serious or something like that. Okay. His goal is to break Damon Hummel's school record, which is like 172. Whew. He's got a lot of work ahead of him, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I love to I love to hear his attitude about that. Yeah, and he's only a sophomore, so he's got two years to go to yeah. to break that record. Um, and then Trevor Wally threw in the pole vault at eleven six, so Trevor's been consistent all year. Mm -hmm. By the way, we should mention McKenna Jackson on the girls' side missed um, she missed the Bremen sectional due to injury. Mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out to McKenna. What a great career she had! Just. Not yeah. able to compete at Bremen after winning a conference championship in the pole vault. And, and, the, and, and setting the school record. And setting the school record. Mm -hmm. And the winning pole vault on Tuesday at Bremen was 8-6, hmm. which is yeah. something that McKenna's consistently gotten over in her career, and I just I just felt even worse for her at that. Yeah. But what a sweet kid McKenna was. So anyway, yeah, back to the girls just for that one moment. But yeah, the, boys, the, boys, the boys advancing from Rochester, Dunwoody, Bailey, Heisey, and Wally. Mm-hmm. And they will be running at Goshen? Go Goshen yeah. next Thursday, yeah. yeah. Girls go to Kokomo? Girls go to Kokomo. Boys go to Goshen. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That will do it for the uh, Zebras there, I, I believe. We covered mm -hmm. everything for Rochester. Yep. Uh, let's talk a little Argus softball as we get ready for sectional play in the for the Dragons. Yeah, Argus has a record of 4-13 and 13 as we speak. Um, they have a sectional game against Oregon Davis coming up. Of course, one of their four wins is against OD. OD does not have a win on the season, so Argus will travel to Westville to play OD in the sectional quarterfinal, and the winner of that game will play Culver in the semifinals. That Argus-OD uh, game is coming up on Tuesday. Winner plays Culver Thursday. Hmm. Sectional final is Friday. It's a little different uh, Westville schedule. I don't think Westville has lights. Uh, so they're, so they're playing one... one game on Monday, one game on Tuesday, one game on Wednesday, one game on Thursday, championship game on Friday. Okay. So hopefully the, when you do that, you're really yeah, weather. fingers crossed about the weather. Right. So we'll see how they do that. But, again, 
I think I think Argus. We've talked about the Stackhouse sisters. I think Ivy went over a hundred strikeouts on the season. Mm-hmm. So again, you'd have to say they'd probably be favored against OD. Yeah. Um, the Argus baseball team is 0 and 15. They still have a game against Triton coming up on Saturday. They have not played. That'll be their first game in eight days when they step on the field again. I think they've. I don't know if they've been victimized a little bit by the weather and teams needing to make up games. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we will see how they do against a Triton team that, again, is pretty young. That's loaded with sophomores. So we will see how they do. And of course, Triton is in their sectional. I can't imagine we would see Jackson Kindig on the mound in that. Uh, but who knows? Um, again, they'll play Culver in the sectional quarterfinals, and Culver's won only one game. So uh, we will see again. I think when it, again they have an opportunity there. Mm-hmm. And as we mentioned, the winner of that Argus Culver game will play the winner of Marquette Catholic in Westville. Yeah, yeah. And we said Westville probably your favorite for that sectional, slightly. Very slightly. I wouldn't be surprised if Tri Township. Tri Townships at home. And they got, I think, a pretty favorable draw as well. I certainly wouldn't be surprised if, if they emerged from that. Yeah. Casting softball and baseball with some monster games coming up tonight. Oh, my goodness. Conference tonight. implications in both. They could win conference championships in softball and baseball. They're guaranteed a share of the conference title for softball. Yeah. Could win it outright with a win at uh, Ray Park and Royal Center. Casting boys, boy. We'll talk about that in a second, but uh, we were hoping that maybe there was a chance that somebody would beat LaVille once and give them a shot to tie it. Not only did that happen, they actually got beat twice. So now, winner takes it all in that yeah. LaVille and Caston baseball game Exactly. Tonight. It's a con- yeah, it's a conference championship game. Yeah. Softball-wise, you know, I think we need to create a new term. If a girl pitches a no-hitter and hits a home run in the same game, it should be called a Zimpleman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Either a Zimpleman or a Cripe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because Addison did that against Triton last night, fourteen to one and uh, fourteen to one in five innings, I think it was, or or was it six? I think it was six innings. A crimpleman. Yeah, crimpleman. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, at, yeah, even though she allowed a run, she did pitch a no hitter. Yeah, she walked four. Yeah, but did pitch a no hitter and also hit a home run she, against Valley. Uh, back on Saturday, she led off the game with a home run, which was funny because when we did the Cast and Valley game last year at Valley, she let off the game with a home run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but her her pitching has been uh, just really, really good. I know she's she's talked about a, a kind of a private uh, pitching coach she's talked with. She's she's had her for a while, but really worked this year to get more spin on the ball. I talked with Kylie Logan, her catcher. She's talked about how much more movement her pitches have. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, 17-4 uh, and four overall, 6-0. and oh. They won seven in a row, five of the seven by shutout. And one of the two they didn't win by shutout. They went fourteen to one. Yeah. And Addison pitched a no hitter. Is, is the pitching coach someone we know? She's no. Uh, her name is Kelly, and she's from the western, like the Rucheville, Kokomo okay. area. Okay. I was going to give her a plug because uh, some other folks in the area might want to, you know, reach out to her. Cause yeah. Obviously, she's doing a good job. Yeah, she is. So, again, uh, and again, a very. Again, so they've clinched a share of the Hoosier North. Again, it was interesting because the the Pioneer game was supposed to be on Tuesday, mm-hmm. which would have put a lot of pressure on that game. Now they can go into the Pioneer game knowing that they've already got a share. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't we'll think s- they want to share it. But I don't think they want to <laughs> share it, and this is a group of girls that does not enjoy sharing things. Yeah, so yeah they're not good at sharing. They have not. I mean, they're going for their third straight perfect conference record. They were yeah. went 7-0 and two years ago, 7-0 and last year, 6-0 and so far this year. So. Yeah. And I think they won their last in 20... In fact, their, of course, the last team to beat them in a conference game was... Pioneer. Pioneer back mm-hmm. in 2021. Yeah. The eventual state champions. Yeah. Decent season that year. Who yeah. had a girl named Haley Gottschall in the circle. Yeah. 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 So we, we will see how they do again. And again, how would you like to be a Knox softball fan? If Pioneer beats Caston tonight, it'll be a three-way tie. Mm-hmm. Because Knox is done. They're in the, they're in the house at 6-1. and one. Yeah. So, and what an improvement they made in their program, and it all mm. depends on. Yeah. If you're a Knox fan, you are a huge, huge Pioneer fan tonight. Right, right. Baseball wise, the, this team has won six in a row, uh, ten to one, and eleven to one over Culver in the two games this week. And guess what? They didn't have to use Talon Zider in either game, so Talon will be fresh and ready to go against Laville tonight. Mm-hmm. 
Again, when Caston played Laville earlier this year, they faced Plummer, and they lost 2 to nothing. So I imagine they're not going to get Plummer tonight. But we'll see. That, I mean, I'm, But again, I'm just guessing. We don't follow Laville regularly. Will they get Schwitz or Wolford, their other pitchers? So, again, I'm, I'm, I think this pitching matchup is looking pretty favorable for Caston. Uh, but, boy, have they been playing well, and they have tightened up the defense tremendously well. Uh, they had a lot of errors against when, – when I saw them play against Valley, it, it looked really discouraging. I mean, they, they had so many errors, but they really tightened things up uh, defensively. Lance Hanna can play – Shortstop, third base when he's not pitching. Um, he, Lance Hanna can catch as well. So to have a player who's that versatile, and I, you know, I talked with Blake Malenkov, he goes, he's really like baseball smart. He, I don't have to tell him, you know, I don't have to tell him how to play shortstop or third base. He gets the nuances of each position. You know, Lance is a move in from Rossville, who has just been a perfect fit for this team. Mm -hmm. Noah Hurd uh, has been on fire at the plate when they had that doubleheader sweep against Pioneer. He went to bat eight times. He got on base eight. He got on base eight times. Wow. Three, three wow. Sing, he went three for three with five walks. Yeah. And so he has been uh, tremendous of late. Um, plays a nice first base as well. Uh, you know, Ryan Spin has really solidified that second base spot. You know, with talent, Pete Duvall made another incredible play defensively uh, against Pioneer. He made a. Um, it was Brayden Erickson was batting a little kind of little looping pop up over the pitcher's head. And, I mean, Pete had to bust his butt quickly, and he made a diving catch and then threw to first base for a double play. Hmm. Um, and, you know, the, the outfield defense has improved as well. Edison Byram and Caleb Stinson really solid out there in left field and center field, respectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what a, what a huge night. Too bad it's not both at home. The uh, softball team will be over at Royal Center, like we said. So uh, a chance that uh, I don't think they get the fire trucks out for section or for uh, conference titles, but mm -hmm. uh, boy, what a night it could be here for uh, Caston if they can get two wins, they can have uh, two conference titles in the same night. Right. I mean, it was amazing. Just barely over a week ago, they were four and three in the conference, and it was just kind of well. I guess Lavelle's running away with this. All of a sudden, they won six in a row in conference play, and they're ten and three, yeah. and they're right there. Yeah, Knox Knox grabbed one from Laville, which we were thinking, you know, that would be a possibility. Mm -hmm. But uh, Laville dropped one to Triton yeah. as well, and you know that was kind of a, a little bit of a shock. You know, Triton doing okay, but hadn't been you know at the top of the conference by any means. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, here we are, a chance to win the thing outright for the uh, Cast and Comets tonight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, talk about the uh, the golf team for the yeah uh, a, really, a really nice win uh, on Thursday night they beat Knox 196 to 198 um, Max Summers Lucas Graham um, Gage Thomas all shot 49 Jace Rensler also shot a 49 four guys who shot 49 that's how you get to 196 mm -hmm. yeah shout out to Gage Thomas uh, you know Pete Duvall we talk about him a lot but Gage uh, has done a lot of camera work for us for the casting during the basketball season so mm -hmm. shout out to him so a great win the hoosier north tournament coming up saturday at ron barn golf club at mill creek i guess casting's considered the host school mm. for that so we'll see how they do obviously they don't play many i think they played there before uh, um, i don't know if that's a huge advantage but we'll see how they do i mean again winnemac is the defending conference champ but uh we'll see if Ka again casting they've got what seven eight kids out on the team so mm -hmm. in the numbers situations improve last year's t last year's conference tournament it was really cold and windy this was supposed to be in the 80s on yeah Saturday. actually so, decent weather maybe yeah so we'll see how that affects play mm -hmm. uh girls track cast and finished 10th at the bremen sexually scored 12 points but the superstar here is brianna amasquita to make regionals in the discus third place with a throw, uh, let me see here, she had 94 feet, 11 inches, third place. The first cast and girl to make regional since Adriana Daig. Okay, trivia question. Steve, what year did Adriana Daig make regional? Well, I read your story. I think it was 2017. Yeah, 2017 yeah. is when Adriana graduated. So it's been seven years. So yeah. I think everybody is just thrilled with Brianna and all the work she's put in. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get to third in the discus. Boys track team finished in uh, ninth place and scored 17 points. This is an extraordinarily young team, almost exclusive. I mean, it's a freshman-dominated team mm -hmm. um, with kids like Landon Rigney and Gage Manier. Those They're kind of two really promising sprinters. Jabez Yarber is kind of the old man of the team. He's a sophomore. Mm -hmm. Bo Boaz Yarber, he's a freshman. Um 
Lane Hook is a freshman who's a really good uh, potential in the field in the field events. Um, Nate Runkel sixth in the discus, and he's just a freshman. Mm. So um, this team is just really and and through a PR, I think through over 120 for the first time in the discus. So just a Lane Halterman is kind of the one kind of veteran. He's a senior, I think, in the in the sh- throwing events. But again, young team just need to get more kids out. But I know uh, I know Blair Zimmerman is just he was like you know. We've got to get these kids ready for their fall sport now, mm-hmm. and and I think they're doing a good job of that. And I'm really kind of excited for the cast of the football team because mm-hmm. basically all these kids play football as well. Yeah, I believe I saw a thing. Ran- Landon uh, broke the vertical jump record at the school. Yeah. So. Uh, well, the, and the fact they're keeping track of these things is yeah. good too because I think it's going to motivate kids to yeah to do these things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, on the girl side, uh, Maddie Douglas. Yeah. Broke the girls' high, long, or uh, vertical jump record. Yeah, so a couple of freshmen. Yeah, so so this is yeah it's a, it's a very young freshman dominated cast and boys track team. No regional qualifiers this year, but I think well, they'll they'll be in the mix next year. Yeah, again for Rigney to make the hundred meter final at the sectional, that's saying a lot because he was the only freshman in that. Mm-hmm. And usually that's it's a race where you got to be at least a junior. It's usually dominated by juniors and seniors. Yeah. Usually yeah. by seniors. I mean, we're talking about we saw Javid May from Triton and Wade Jones and those guys. I mean, mm-hmm. so to be in that mix, yeah, it'll be impressive. fast. Yeah, yeah, yep. All right, let's take another quick break. Here we come back. Let's talk some uh, Culver Cavaliers when we uh, after we get back here on Talking Sports with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need, no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency. Now more than ever, your business needs fast and reliable internet. Whether you're hosting a meeting, printing invoices, or keeping inventory, your business deserves the best internet speeds to keep everything running smoothly. And to get the best speeds, you need a fiber connection. Here at RTC, we have the solution for you. Contact me, Steve Stricker, to see how we can best serve you, or you can also visit us online at rtc1.com. All right, welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, let's talk some Culver Cavaliers, Val. Yeah, their softball team finished conference play two and five in the conference. They went four and eleven overall. But really, I think the way they played that last week of the season is probably how you want to, at least the quality of competition you want to play heading into a one A sectional. You know, they had a tough loss to North Judson the other day, ten to nine. They were down in that game, four to nothing. Came back. It was kind of a seesaw, classic seesaw affair. Um, and then a twenty to three loss to Winnemac uh, to close out the regular season. But I think, I think they might have been throwing off a little bit. Um, I think um, they've got uh, the freshman pitcher uh, Heilman. I think is her name. And so they need to, they they want to uh, have her. Uh, pitching at her best uh, as we get to the postseason um, again Culver got a bye they're waiting the Argus OD winner I'd have to say Culver should be favored in that game 
or at least would have a chance. And of course, and then if they win that game, they're in the sectional final. Again, the key once they get to the sectional is if they wind up having to face Westville in the final, can they find a way to manufacture runs off Vargas, mm-hmm. who is Westville's star pitcher, Kirsten Vargas. So again, it's a Culver team that has uh, struggled a little bit defensively. They've got to, They've also got to keep the errors in check. Uh, but I think in terms of putting uh, offensively, I think they've got they've improved quite a bit as the season's gone on. Mm-hmm. Um, baseball, they fin- they went one fifteen and one overall, zero and fourteen in the conference. They got swept by Triton, and they got swept by a very motivated Caston team that was really tr- you know trying to stay in the conference race. Lost uh, ten to one and eleven to one. Um, they have allowed ten or more runs in five straight games, so they've got a figure out both the pitching and defense parts of this. Um, you know, Hayden Parker uh, ha- had some moments on the mound, but has struggled a little bit on the mound as well. But again, you know, Culver drew Argus in the sectional, so again, it's they're going to have a winnable game right off the bat. Okay. Uh, what do we know about uh, track sectionals for the Culver Cavaliers? Anything? Uh, no regional qualifiers in either girls or boys. The girls scored two points, and the boys scored zero points. I did want to give a shout-out to that 4x100 relay team that scored, um, finished in seventh place at Bremen on Tuesday in the girls. Okay. That was um, two seniors in Grace Sieber and Giselle Villegas who were on that. And I like the two young runners on that team as well. Uh, Malia Johnson is a girl who's going to have a very promising career. She's just a freshman, and she does uh, hurdles as well. Okay. So I just wanted to give a shout-out. I, I was... I was paying attention. Yeah. And just, uh, again, boys, why, yeah. Uh, so the girl, I want to give a shout out to the girls. Uh, yeah. Culver. Yep. So uh, let's talk some Pioneer Panthers here. We talked about the uh, the big game for Cast and obviously uh, Pioneer hosting that game tonight. They've got uh, a chance with a win to share the conference title with uh, Cast and Ann Knox. So mm-hmm. a monster game coming up. Uh, and it's not the only game. Coming up for Pioneer tonight, they're actually uh, having a double header. Uh, following that game, they're going to be playing Kankakee Valley. So wow! Uh, not only <laughs> yeah. are they playing a monster game against a conference w- yeah. rival, but then you bring in KV. I wanted to apologize. I assumed once the cast and game got moved to Friday, I assumed that the Kankakee Valley game was going to be canceled. No, yeah. <laughs> they're playing a double header uh, against two different teams. Senior is seventeen and six on the year. Yeah, and they have a four twenty eight team batting average, and their speed is just. Is very dangerous because when you got Cameron Newby and you got uh, you know at the top of the lineup, and then you've got Sells, and then you've got Attinger, you've just got a lot of slap hitters who just find their way to get on base, and they're not they're not going they're going to bother you with their speed. It's funny because the 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 closest thing they have to a sl- well, I mean not the closest thing she is a slugger, Casey Webb, but she usually hits eighth in this batting order, mm-hmm. and so it's just a lot of. Um, but again, a lot of girls who can get. I mean, Ava Ott is a girl who can. She makes contact a lot, so that's why they're going to be dangerous in the sectional because they put so much pressure on your defense. Mm-hmm. Now they had that loss to Valley when they ran into a really good strikeout type pitcher in Dalen Bustard, and they wound up losing six to three. Um, so again, the key now against. Uh, and now obviously they're going to face Zimpleman tonight, who's a strikeout pitcher. How often will they make contact against her? Obviously, they they faced uh, Mollenkoff in recent years, so I'm, I'm not sure they faced Zimpelman in the circle as uh, very well. Mm-hmm. And then how will Lois Slayer kind of respond to that challenge, a freshman facing a really, really good D1 senior in the circle? Right, right. Uh, but again, a 428 team batting average, that's pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> pretty good team average. Yeah, uh, and again, once and then, of course, Winnemac coming up on Monday night in the sectional, and they'll get... You know, will they get Roush or Hall, or will Coach Belcher piggyback Roush and Hall, pitch mm-hmm. them both, and see? But they're going to put pressure on that Winnemag defense. Mm-hmm. So, again, as long as Pioneer keeps making contact, they're going to be dangerous mm-hmm. uh, in that section. I, again, they're prob- again, they're still ranked number 12 in 2A, so you'd have to say they're the favorite going in. But, again, we they didn't get a bye, so, again, it's kind of – they're not a – then, out of, oh my goodness, we'd be shocked if they didn't win favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Baseball, they are 10 and 10 overall. They finished conference play 8 and 6. They're going to finish in a tie for fourth place. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whoever loses the Winnemac North Judson game today will also finish 8 and 6, and the winner of that game will go 9 and 5. So, Mm -hmm. Braden Erickson hit a home run against North Judson the other day. What made that unique was that it was his first road home run of his career. Hmm. I think he's hit 12. The other 11 have been at home. They were all at home. But he hit one against North Judson. They wound up winning 13-2 to to split that two-game set after losing to Judson 5-4 to on Monday. And then they were supposed to play Judson on Tuesday. It got postponed to Wednesday. Then they were supposed to play Culver Academy on Thursday. That got rained out. That goes that goes with the theme for Pioneer this year. They they have dominated games at North Judson. Yeah. In in almost every sport. Yeah. Uh, that was a weird game. It was 2-2 two to two after five innings. Mm-hmm. Brandon Starr had a big base hit with two outs in the sixth inning. He put him up three to two, and then they scored ten in the seventh. Hmm. And it was uh, North Judson pitcher uh, ran up against the 120 pitch limit. They had to take him out. And after that, it was just kind of Pioneer just kind of ran wild. I wanted to give a shout out to Eli Guffey. He had two hits in the seventh inning, and that was after he had hurt his thumb. Um, because Eli's the catcher, and he he hit a pass ball, and then he I hit him kind of in the Right here, and then he, as he went to reach and then grabbed down, then he heard a thumb, like his, heard, he heard his thumb again, and he was in agony. And mm. he, the trainer take a look, took a look, but he stayed in the game, and then he threw out a runner trying to steal third on the next pitch. Hmm. This was this is tough. This kid is tough, and he's only a sophomore. And then he had two hits in the seventh inning. So, and I was like, "Is your thumb feeling better?" He goes, "No, it's still painful." <laughs> so yeah, so I I give a lot of I going to give a shout out to Eli, and of course. Um, Erickson, who was great on the mound in that win at Judson, 13, again, to hold a pretty good Judson offense to two run, pitched a two-hitter yeah. in that game. That was after they had lost to Judson 5-4 to four earlier in the week. So, yeah. again, Erickson and Guffey are going to be key for them moving forward. And then, uh, but they've got, you know, Drew McCagg has contributed offensively. He gives you some speed out of that leadoff spot in the batting mm-hmm. order. And uh, getting some hits, you know, again, if Sterrett can come through and uh, Brody Howard and Lane Weldy, they've been contributing in offense, so that would help out a lot. Yeah, get a chance to see them in action in Game Two on uh, on Wednesday over at Chris Root Field against the yeah. Bremen Lions. Yeah, so. and, and and again, that was a, it was also a good bounce back after they got swept at Caston because mm-hmm. that was that was an ugly night at Caston. Mm-hmm. They scored a run in the first inning of the first game, then didn't score for twelve straight innings, then scored two runs in the seventh inning of the second game. Yeah. Yeah, but it rough. was ugly. They scored three runs and a double header. That's usually yeah. not going to do be that great. But yeah. again, much better uh, against Judson in that second game. Yeah, golf team like you talked about is going to be at uh, here at Round Barn on Saturday. Right, they had a dual match against Winnemac the other night, and all five players shot between forty four and forty six. Hmm. So that's good. I mean, they're they're gonna they're they're gonna be. You know, again, as you look down the road for conference, I mean, if they can keep up scores in the low upper 80s, low 90s, they're going to be in the mix mm-hmm. to win a conference championship. Obviously, Micah Rands has been the number one player all year, but they've got some good depth there on the team now. Yeah. Really, really some great results for the girls track team on Tuesday at Kokomo, finishing in fourth place in a, you know, a monster really big field, you know, big right. schools. I mean, it was so close. Western won with 101, North. Northwestern had night or was Western 101, McConaughey 99. I think and then, McConaughey was third. Or McConaughey was third. Yeah. yeah, Western, Northwestern, McConaughey, yeah. Pioneer. Four teams separated by just 17 points. That's yeah. not much at all. Yeah. And he, your Pioneer regional qualifiers, Espen Molinar was third in the 100 hurdles, and she won the pole vault nine feet. Um, Michelle Harding was won the 200, 26.95. Mm-hmm. And was second in the long jump, 16 feet. Mm-hmm. Um, Violet Montgomery was third in the 3200. How about 1214? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a great time for Violet. She'd been in the 1250s earlier in the year. That she shaved off a lot of time, and in the 3200 to advance. Kirsten Nice second in the high jump at five feet. I think she's seated fourth at the regional. Mm-hmm. Kirsten's got a shot at state. Mm-hmm. I think there are a couple girls who had five one, and she's right there at five feet. So. And I think she's uh, she's gone five two, so mm-hmm. you know that's not her PR. And that four by one relay finished second at the sectional. Nyes, Michelle Harding, Molinar, Rochelle Harding. Mm-hmm. So they advanced as well. So a really really good 
sectional for the Pioneer Girls. They've they've had a great year all year. I mean, it's, um, yeah, they're not a real big team, but boy, they sure get some big results. Yeah, impressive. Yeah, very impressive. So, and how and, the boys track team? Yeah, a great night for them at the Kokomo sectional. Uh, again, um, Carson Meyer, or uh, yeah. Again, the 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 four by four, the four by four relay and the four by eight relay both won sectional championships, mm -hmm. and I believe they, I believe they both set school records. Yeah, yeah, I know the four by eight for sure. Eight eleven point one two. It's time to get excited about the four by eight relay at Pioneer. Eight eleven. Mm -hmm. They are going to be up there at the regional. They will be. Mm -hmm. They will compete with everybody at Go. There, there's nobody at Goshen that they, uh, that should dominate them. If you're running an eight eleven, I mean. You're real fast in that event, and that's <laughs> yeah. Meyer, Kitchell, Baker, and Dot. I mean, that, that's that's mm -hmm. all four runners averaging just a little over two minutes. Right. Yeah. That's pretty special. Yeah. Leighton Dot also was third in the Leighton Dot also Dot Baker and Kitchell also run the four by four relay. Mm -hmm. Austin Brook runs the four by four relay. And and now that you say that, I, I believe that was a school record that was in place since like 1986. Right. If you get under 3:30 in the 4x4 relay, you are to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. They ran 3:29.5. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They are serious. I mean, yeah. in both relays. Yeah. Meyer was third in the 3200. Kitchell was third in the 400. Baker was second in the 400. So Baker, Baker and Kitchell go 2-3. Jackson Baker. Well, we thought of him as an 800 runner all this time. How about 51.9 in the 400 and mm -hmm. finishing second? Mm -hmm. And Dot was third at 435.6 in the mile. Man, 435 only gets you third place at that. Hmm. That was a, that had to have been a fast mile. Mm -hmm. um, and I know McConaughey had some kids in there. So, yeah, uh, so it'd be, I, I'm curious to see. So Dot will run three times. Uh, Baker will run three times. Uh, Meyer will run twice. And I believe he was also fourth in the mile, so he might get a callback. Mm -hmm. So again, and it's interesting. All these points came from the track. They didn't get any field points mm -hmm. last night. Yeah, it, it's those uh, those three kids are, are pretty amazing. There, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's been fun to watch them. Yeah, and, you know, and I think, like you said, the the biggest thing that uh, is impressive is their versatility. Because you know, you think of Baker as an eight hundred and a miler, and well. Hey, let's run the four hundred and let's qualify for regional. You yeah. know, and and Dot has done the same thing. I mean, he's ran the four hundred before uh, in races and done really well. And uh, Carson, same thing. You know, he can run three different races and and be competitive. So yeah, pretty impressive. Uh, you know, for a team that small to to score that well in a field that large. All right. So very curious to see how Pioneer does against the South Bend area teams and the NLC teams that they'll see at Goshen yeah. on Thursday. Yeah. All right, uh, let's take another break here. When we come back, we'll wrap things up, talk some uh, Tip New Valley and some Winnemac here on Talking Sports with Val. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible, it should be customized to patient needs, it should strive for better health outcomes, it should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. 
Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large eye. If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. All right, welcome back here talking sports with Val and kind of wrap up our final segment here. Let's talk some uh, Tiffany Valley softball team. Um, you know, for a young squad finishing the year 8 and 11, but, uh, you know, obviously led the way with uh, Daylon Buzzard. I mean, she just did a little bit of everything. Obviously, right. very good in the circle, but she could hit the ball as well. And yeah. just had a, a lot of youth around her on it. Right. And, you know, they're 8 and 11. Five of the 11 losses have been by shutout, and three of the five have been one to nothing mm-hmm. shutouts. Yeah. So, again, um, they're a team that they've got to be aggressive on the base pass. They've got to be kind of efficient. If they get somebody on base, they got to find a way to get them in. Mm-hmm. Um, again, Dalen's been phenomenal. They had that great walk-off win against Pioneer last Saturday. They beat a top-10 team in 2A and beat them 6-3 to three in a walk-off three-run homer by Michaela Costello in the bottom of the seventh. That was, that was an awesome moment for her and for the team. Again, Kaylin Mann, she gives them a lot of speed out of the top of the lineup. So we talk about aggressive base running. I mean, it's Kalen who's kind of the head of kind of the head of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when when Dalen's pitching, McKaylee's at short. When McKaylee's pitching, Dalen's at short. So they're gonna have a solid shortstop out there. Um, Casey Shriver has really taken kind of command of that catcher spot. They've got two young catchers with Threlkel and uh, Shriver. I think Threlkel's maybe had a little bit of a shoulder issue, so they're playing. They're, they've been, they've been DPing Threlkel or playing her at first base. Shriver's really taken over a lot of that catching responsibility. But again, the key is, I mean, first of all, they, they cannot make errors uh, when they when they take on a good Knox team in the sectional, and then they've got to, uh, you know, got to take advantage of the base runners they get because wh- whatever Barnes sister they get from Knox, they're gonna it'll be a challenge. Yeah, not a, not an easy sectional. I mean, even if they do get past Knox, it's it's loaded. Right, and again, it's a, the se- the the schedule for that sectional is a little different at King Key Valley. They play Knox on Tuesday. If they win, they play Rensselaer on Thursday, and if they win that game, the sectional final Saturday morning. Hmm. Yeah. So every every Tuesday, sectional schedule just yeah. a little different. So it's Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, but again, that that I guess could allow Daylin to pitch all three games if they were mm-hmm. to move through the bracket. Yeah. Uh, baseball team, you know, that's another another team that's very young. They've uh, right. you know they've had their struggles. Trying to uh, you know ba- a little bit of everything really right four and fourteen on the year we talked about in, in our first segment that they've just lost a lot of games being independent because when teams have to make up a game make up a conference game it's usually yeah. Valley that gets ends up on the chopping block Pioneer had to drop Valley Pioneer was supposed to play Valley on Wednesday they wound up having to play Judson Pioneer wound up playing Judson that day and Valley got stuck at home mm-hmm. playing n- nobody so um, again Cameron Manuel is the ace of this pitching staff and. To have a hard throwing lefty, you just don't see that very often. And I imagine he'll be on the mound when they open sectional play against Knox. And Valley got the bye, so they're going to have a lot of pra- get a lot of practice time in between now and then. Uh, again, we've talked about Braxton Alderfer, the freshman catcher, who's really uh, fit in there. Uh, you know, Landon Durkis is a veteran at first base, but he can play third base also. Hunter Paxton's a freshman, but you can tell he knows how to play. Uh, he's a solid shortstop, but again, Paxton and Alder for the future, and Manuel and Durkis are kind of the veterans of this team. Mm-hmm. Tennis team kind of ran into Yeah, I, I wanted to give a shout-out to uh, Manuel. He had four RBIs and a nice win over Morgan Township the other day, won that game 5-4. to four. Yeah. Tennis team, really good season, but they kind of ran into a little bit of a buzzsaw there with Columbia City. Yeah, I mean, this, this is a tough <laughs> – That's a, you know, Valley's never won a girls' tennis sectional. And the reason why is because they're in a really, really tough sectional every year. Mm-hmm. And they got a bye, but they wound up losing 5-0 to – Columbia City last night in the sectional semifinals. Yeah, but again, the the the, the progress that the Ackermans have made, uh, Hunter and Emily with that program is still very very good, and they're going to be a very very formidable opponent uh, once they get to the Indiana Northern State Conference. Yeah, just as they were in the TRC. Yep, yep. Last year. Yep. 
Boys golf, you know, we talked about that rain out of that uh, tournament or uh, match they were working on that would yeah. have put them with Rochester last night. But West Parker had a run, yeah, but still they, they've been getting in some 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 holes and they've been getting some rounds. West Parker had a thirty six and a nine hole match the other day, had three straight birdies, uh, and then West had uh, they had what was called the INSC Preview Tournament mm-hmm. um, the other day, and Valley won that with a three fifty one, beating some of their future conference opponents mm-hmm. and they won that by like 60 i mean they routed the field and west parker shot an 82 and that was the medalist so but again uh west has been kind of the hot hand of late but um <coughs> eli love and ethan young have been hot and boy nash baus has really he's cut down on his score as well and nash is like the number four on that team so i'm really um <coughs> curious again the, we're, the sectional is still two weeks from now once they get to to Rosella Ford for the sectional, I'm curious to see how they do. Um, again, it's probably going to take something in the 320s to advance, but again, I think this team is is really uh, rounding into form. Uh, they've got a lot of nice players on that team. <coughs> Girls track wise, let's talk. We've got some breaking news, Steve. Three Valley girls athletes on the track team have received callbacks. And we found about found out about that just earlier today. <coughs> Chesney Miller did advance in the 400 meters. She oh, was good. fifth at the sectional, mm-hmm. 101.3, but she got a call back, so she's going. Um, Carly Snyder got a call back in the high jump. She went 410 at the sectional, so she's going. Um, she, I think she was sixth at the sectional, so mm-hmm. congrats to Carly. And then Betty Shepard did get a call back in the 100 hurdle. She was fourth. Well, good. Behind uh, Doran from Rochester, but she's in now at 16.93. That goes with the girls who have already made it. Hadley Wise was third in the 200. She's going. Um, Hadley also ran anchor in that 4x100 relay that won a sectional championship. 51.71 seconds. Ava Smith is back from her hamstring injury, and she ran great the other night. Izzy Woodruff, she's a freshman, just like Hadley. And Gabby Gonzalez is just a sophomore. 51.71, won the sectional. A girl from Culver Academy hurt her hamstring. It was about 20 meters to go, and she started. And Hadley flew by her for the win. Hmm. So it was a great win. I mean, that Culver Academy team was dominating the race, and all of a sudden, Valley came back and won that. Betty Shepard, a sectional champion of the 300 hurdles, 47.42 seconds, so she's going in both hurdle events. She'll be the number two seed at the Kokomo Regional, who's the number one seed. Annabelle Parker from Warsaw, who's Betty's cousin. Really? Wow. Yes. Hurling Her- Her- cousins. They are cousins. Wow. And so we will see how they do. Now, I talked with, now again, I I have not talked with um, Jenny Moriarty since last night. I haven't talked with her about girls' tracks since Tuesday night. I asked her about Betty in the 100 hurdles. She said, we really aren't wild about her running in the 100 hurdles, even if she, I mean, she wanted to do it, so we let her do it. But it's possible that she could still scratch the 100 hurdles and let another athlete run that. Because, again, she's the 16 seed in the 100 hurdles. She's the 2 seed in the 300 hurdles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she ran 47.42, and she gets faster as the 300 hurdles. Mm-hmm. Go on. You see a lot of girls get exhausted as that race goes on. But the two that really seemed to get stronger were Betty and Audrey Wagner from Rochester. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, the hundreds, too, you also have to deal with preliminaries and, and all mm-hmm. that. So, you know, not only are you possibly running two of those, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of energy. Yeah. So, so yeah, and then uh, the 4 by 4 relay, did we mention them? They were second. That was Ava Smith, Betty Shepard, Hadley Wise, Chesney Miller. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was great to see Chesney. She uh, Again, Chesney ran 101.3 in the 400, but she didn't look like Chesney. Mm-hmm. She, you can tell she was really st- struggling to the end. And we found out afterwards Chesney had been sick all week mm-hmm. and had been dealing with a cold. So th- this will be a week to get her healthy. But she really ran a strong anchor. 411.23, I think they'll be like the five seed, five or six seed at the regional. Mm-hmm. So th- they've got a shot, but they've got to get around. They've got to trim some. About five seconds out. They got to get around 405, 406 if they want to make it. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, you know, Penn will have somebody. 
Mm-hmm. For, well, for somebody's. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for A- really happy for Ava Smith because I was really worried about her. She had suffered that injury at Rochester when we televised that, but looked really good. And uh, again, you know, Hadley Wise, a freshman, but beyond her years as a, 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 a on the track. Mm-hmm. And so Chesney will be in two events. Yeah, the relay and the the four hundred. Yeah, the, good. And then the boys had some pretty good results, too. Yeah, uh, boys-wise, uh, again, Wade Jones, uh, no surprise, hmm. sectional champion in the 200 meters at 22.36 seconds, and it, was, it wasn't, it it didn't look like he was, there was more in the tank, let's say. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, won the, he won the race by about a second and a half. That's, mm-hmm. that's a route. Mm-hmm. That is, I mean, it was not a close race. So talking with Jenny Moriarty, I, I was hoping to get a chance to talk to Wade. Couldn't. Uh, I think couldn't uh, find him afterwards, but hey, he's, he's Wade Jones. He's fast. Got mm-hmm. to hustle. But talking with Jenny Moriarty afterwards, and Jenny said, "Yeah, she really thinks the competition of the regional will bring out Wade's best." Yeah. Because again, I, I don't. He wasn't. I don't think he had to switch it into high gear to mm-hmm. run a twenty-two point three. So yeah. it's a good sign, though. Uh, so Wade is going. He also ran anchor on the four by one hundred relay that finished second, and they will advance forty-four point. 5-2, Grady Moriarty runs the first leg on that, Owen Omandi runs the second leg, and Nate Parker runs the third leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you know, talking to Grandpa Roy there, Owen ran a pretty good uh, 200 final as well. I, pretty yeah, impressive he, because... He made the finals. I think he was sixth, yeah. Yeah, made the finals. He was the only underclassman. There was all juniors and seniors, and then Owen. Yeah, that that's a race that the 100 and the 200, they really favor kind of the older kids. Yeah, yeah. So he's got to give him a shout out there. Yeah. Grandpa was bragging on him earlier. As he yeah, as he should. <laughs> right. he, Owen's a very talented young athlete. Yeah. Okay, w- uh, let's talk about Winnemac. Yeah. Uh, Winnemac softball, sixteen and seven overall. They finished conference play four and three, so they'll finish in uh, fourth place, I believe. Mm-hmm. They have one more regular season game at a very good Tri County team today. Yeah. Okay. That'll be a nice. Um, game to get you ready for postseason and then pioneer coming up on monday night in the sectional mm-hmm. and again we talked about pioneer they get on base they like to cause havoc on the base pass winamac has got to keep pioneer short game and keep their base running in check and they've got to make you know they've got to throw people out on the bases when they have the opportunity mm-hmm. this pioneer is going to be very very aggressive again corinne combs she's going to have to be kind of uh you know on, on her toes all night behind the plate yeah yeah again how will Coach Belcher, what will be her pitching strategy? Will be because she's talked about Adriana Hall and Chloe Roush being kind of a one and one A. I think Roush has pitched the majority of the innings. I think she's she doesn't. I think she's been uh, picking Hall spots for her. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how she uses her two pitchers. Again, I, I like this. I like the speed with this cat with this Winnipeg team. Again, you got you know, and we'll be talking about her momentarily in track. Maggie Smith at shortstop. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I like Michaela Werner a lot, uh, and then when you got uh, uh, Lindsey uh, Walters at second base, they're good up the middle defensively. Mm-hmm. So we will see how they do. But again, they again Pioneer makes you pay for errors, mm-hmm. so they've got to play well and then uh, well defensively. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, uh, but it's it's it, they got a tough draw. We'll see how they do. Yeah, baseball uh, nine and nine overall, eight and five in the conference. I think we've been talking about. Uh, some of their offensive issues. The pitching has been fine with uh, Addison Allen and Brody Wenz. They're two left-handed pitchers. Braden Mathias is kind of their best right-handed pitcher. Had a tough loss to Rochester the other day. Lost 7-6. to six, Scored two in the bottom of the seventh to get close. Fell just short. Um, they've got uh, a makeup game at Judson today. Winner will finish in third place in the conference behind Caston and Le- Whoever loses the Cast and Laville game, mm-hmm. but again, I I wouldn't look too much into that game. Why? Because they drew each other in the sectional, and Winnipeg will play Judson again at Judson on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And that's the game that will really count. So, right. Uh, again, uh, with Winnipeg, we've talked about this team. Again, it's a it's a pretty nice veteran uh, lineup, uh, but just have to find ways to score runs. They've uh, again uh, the two Wheeler brothers, White and Cody. I like them both a lot. White's the senior, Cody's the freshman, but I like them both. I like their uh, you know, White can hit it. White's a good hitter, and Cody's a really poised young pitcher as well, who they've kind of used in kind of a bullpen role. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, uh, a, a capable team. It, it, again, it's a tough sectional, but again, they got to. You know, I I saw Judson play the other day. Um, I think Winnemac and Judson are, they match up very well together. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that should be like a, that should be a close game either way. Uh, we'll see about Hebron and South again. Hebron and South Central in the other half of the draw. So I think if you're Winnemac and Justin, you're, you're both probably thinking, "Hey, we can win this game. We've got a chance to make it to the sectional final." Right, right. I mean, it's it's only five teams, but it's five pretty good teams. Yeah. Boys golf uh, again. Obviously, we talked about the upcoming conference uh, match yeah. that'll be held here in Rochester. Yeah, they had a nice win over. When am I got a nice win over Pioneer the other night? Won one seventy seven to one seventy nine. Brendan Hines shot a 39. So he's going to be in that. And, of course, you got the conference tournament coming up on Saturday, and Brendan's going to be in that medalist mix, I would think. Yeah, yeah, you would think so, for sure. So the, so uh, Coach Shell, you know, I mean, he did a great job with the girls' program and now uh, continuing on with the boys' program. We'll see how they do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Girl, girls' track, obviously. Um, so they were at Rensselaer? Kankakee Valley Kankakee was Valley. the girls' yeah. I knew it was one of those two. Yeah, and Kankakee Valley won on their home track. Uh, Winnemac had two regional qualifiers. There's that name again, Maggie Smith. Mm-hmm. Third in the 800 meters, 228.73. And the other was another girl we've seen on the basketball court, Marissa Iverson. Second in the high jump at 410. Mm-hmm. Lost to uh, Flores from North Judson, who also went 410. Lost on a tie break. So, mm-hmm. again, Marissa had a... You know, she's. I, I remember talking with Marissa during basketball season about how much time she had spent in the weight room. I think it's kind of paying off on the, tr- might be paying off on the track as well. Right, right. Uh, boys wise, two regional qualifiers, both shot putters. Charles Dysinger, sophomore, won the shot put at the Rensselaer sectional last night, 47 6. Max Keller, senior, was third place, 46 7. Huh. So. Congratulations to them. To uh, yeah. Coach Kappas and his two shot putters. Yeah. And the uh, regional for them, they will be going to Goshen as well, or do they go? Valparaiso They go for to that. Valparaiso. Okay. Yeah. So they will see all the region. Yeah. And the girls will go to? Portage. Portage. Okay. So, yeah, they see all the region folks there. Yeah. It's hard to believe that just the uh, you know the difference between Pioneer and Winnemac, they, they go completely different directions for regionals. Yeah, it's... We will again, and 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 it affects us because we don't get to see Winnemac as often. We would mm-hmm. love to see Winnemac at the Bremen, yeah, girl section at the Plymouth boys section. We would love that. I yeah, mean, yeah. It's it's hard. It's hard enough because I mean we're trying to chase down you know such different locations, and then you throw in a third location, and it just makes it that much harder. Yeah. So. Well, that's but, all. Uh, K- Kinky Key Valley girls and boys both won sectional titles. This yeah. Week. Yeah. That's all you have on your list. Anything else you want to talk about? Well, Valley has a school board meeting on Monday. I don't. I looked at the. It didn't say anything about hiring a girls basketball coach, but we'll be keeping an eye on that situation. Yeah, obviously, they. Everybody wants. To, everybody who's a coaching vacancy wants to usually get it done by the end of May. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens there. And like we said, Plymouth has a uh, new coaching vacancy they need to fill too. So right. that'll be uh, interesting to see who the uh, the Pilgrims can get up there, but. Uh, Joel Grindle and uh, Aaron Butcher are going to be. Yeah, both Hobart and Plymouth have vacancies, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, All right, well, that'll do it here. We'll wrap things up. Uh, obviously, big week coming up for us next week. We'll have uh, girls softball sectionals from Fansler on Monday and Tuesday on IHSA TV from uh, baseball from uh, Chris Root Field there in Wabash on Wednesday. Be back at uh, Fansler for the championship of the softball on Thursday. Have an off night Friday and then uh, Saturday and Monday if uh, Rochester and or Pioneer can advance, we'll have games for you from uh, Chris Root Field. As long as the one of those two teams is yeah. still playing. Softball and baseball sectionals week, it's it's amazing every year. I mean, they're incredible highs and sometimes heartbreaking lows, but yeah. that Sectionals week is always just a cra- – it's for softball and baseball. It's – you know, people don't talk about it the way they talk about basketball sectionals week, but it is usually just a crazy week full of uh, incredible games. Yeah, I, I wish we had a, a way to kind of split ourselves because, you know, there's going to be a really good sectional going on down at North Miami as well. And right. And I've just been thinking about, yeah. you know, 
Caston's path to get out of that sectional is just wow. Right, North Miami. By the way, North Miami softball has been playing a lot better they of late. Have. They beat Maconaqua last night. Yeah. Uh, they beat Northfield on Tuesday. They beat Peru on Wednesday. North Miami starting to get healthy. They, they had some kind of illness slash injury issues. They're starting to get healthy. Yeah. And they're waiting. <laughs> and they're, they'll await that Caston and West Central winner. Yeah. Yeah. So if Caston can get by West Central, they've got a very very up and coming. Da- yeah, North kind of a Miami dangerous team. North Miami team yeah. waiting for them. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, uh, kind of the opposite of what happened last year with Southwood, and you know when they knocked off mm-hmm. North Miami, mm-hmm. they were kind of that team, and and then possibly you know a Southwood team in the championship. I mean that's a mm-hmm. that's a rough road, yeah, for for anybody to 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 go. So good luck to everybody next week as they uh, try and win some uh, sectional championships in either softball or baseball, and we'll come back and talk some more sports on Friday.